Can you guys hear me? Can you see me yet? Hello? Yay! Okay, so my assistant Megan says she can see me. Hopefully you guys can see me. I'm going to wait. Good evening. Thank you. Welcome to Masterpiece Theater. So give me a give me a high sign if you can hear me. Awesome. Great. So happy first day of September. Okay, good. Jared was just in here saying, I'm gonna hang out till everything's good so that it's not like crap, something happened. Hello, I'm so happy to see you guys. It is eight o'clock on Friday night, and it's been storming like crazy where we are. Um, while we wait for a few more people to get in, um, I just wanna make sure you have all the downloads. So um, my assistant, Megan, is the one who's typing in the jessicasprague.com account. She will be able to help you with any, um, question or link or whatever that you have. Um, and if it's something that you'd like to ask to me, then she'll just relay that along. So, um, just wanna make sure that you were able to get into the course. There is one font that you're gonna need if you wanna make any changes to the text. And it's a free font, you just go grab the link there. Um, we're going to be talking about a really cool photo technique that honestly you can use like crazy. It doesn't even matter whether you're going to use a, um, a digital scrapbook page or whether you're going to use this like uh, to print it on something and use it for DIY. Anything you like. In fact, um, this particular set of two photographs, I actually... Um, I took these photos of a friend of mine and her family before they moved just a few weeks ago. And she, the mom, is not a scrapbooker. So I did this photo technique without the background and the cute stitching and what have you. Um, but then, and then gave that to her. And so she's going to print that out as a 12 by 12. But then, um, then I had to scrapbookify it so that I could make a cute page for her. Uh, for our purposes here. So um, Sherry asks what size font we're going to use. Uh, let's see. I think looks like 16. I normally, when it's sort of text size, I use 12, 14, 16. So the fonts, um, I flattened down most of the fonts that are in uh, that are in the project, except for the one font that's called Railway. And it's super versatile. I've found myself lately using it like crazy. So, um, I hope everybody's having a great evening. Did you guys have school people that you've been sending to school over this past week? Um, my kids actually started a long time ago. They started the end of July. So, while everybody else was, you know, getting all set up and saying goodbye to summer, we say goodbye a long time ago. But the nice thing is that, you know, now we're all used to, <laughs> we're used to the pain. <laughs> so um, we, uh, I have an eighth grader and a seventh grader this year, which is so crazy to me because um, they just keep getting older, you know. Um, and this past week as well was my birthday, so hooray! Um, and let's just give a chance for a few more people to come in. If you have any questions kind of right up front, um, let's go ahead and, and uh, we can talk through those. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the birthday wishes. Um, I am the life, the universe, and everything this year, 42. 
Um, and it's just getting better, honestly. Just getting better. So um, why don't we go ahead and get started? I can just go through the items that you have downloaded, and then we can walk through the Photoshop template. So tell me first, while we're, while we're chatting here, um, what, uh, um, what version of Photoshop you're using? Oh, the only, so Lynn asks what font that you need. There were several fonts in the download. The only one that you're going to need um, is the railway font. And you're only going to need, let's see, we might need two of the styles. So Sherry says that they are, there are 18 different styles of the railway font, which is at the same time as being really awesome because it's super versatile, is also kind of a lot. So we're going to use, I think we use semi-bold and medium. We'll have to take a look. But go ahead and install them all because one of the things that I like to do is when you have one really nice font like that, you can basically do whole projects with only one font or two. And it's really nice that way. So it looks like we've got a pretty even mixture of Photoshop and Photoshop elements which is cool. Um, so we can walk through either one of those. Looks like Elements, they're recent, more recent versions of Elements, so they'll do pretty much all the same stuff. The older versions of Photoshop Elements, really, we had to really struggle to hack stuff in that, to make it kind of function the same way, but they've made a lot of, of improvements to Photoshop Elements. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, the one font, so again, the one font that you're going to need is the railway font. Let's also go ahead and um, let's just take a look. I'm going to switch over to my, um, my screen here. Okay. So here's what our template looks like, minus the feet. Um, you didn't get the feet, I mean. Um, but let's go ahead and walk through what's inside of the zip file. There are going to be um, your web preview, which is just the little, the little file. And then you'll find the two pattern papers. Um, these are both from Glitz Design. This one um, CD is actually a, their kit called Cashmere Dame. And man, it is the best. So if you're in the market for a new digi kit, which is me every day, um, that's definitely one to go check out, Cashmere Dame. And then um, yours truly is their other one that's this really pretty rose color or rose pattern that we use in the top right corner. The others are just little smidges that I use, so I just left them in the layered file. So you can see we've got our template, and we've also got this brush set that you're going to need um, in order to do the photo technique. So go ahead and install, well, we'll walk through the install of that brush. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, layout template file. So your template again, minus the photograph, I'll take that out, comes in looking like this. Let's go up the layer stack from the bottom. And that way we can take a look. Now, if you're getting any of those little triangles with the exclamation point inside of them, right here next to any of the type layers, that means that you don't have the railway font installed. The other fonts should all be flattened down, so you shouldn't have trouble with those. But we did, I did link these up so that you can have those to download as well. But I did flatten out this word art right here. I left these various items editable so that you can go back and make changes. Obviously, 
the last name of Stewart and the established date is going to be different depending on who is in the photograph. What I wanted here was, you know, this is kind of a cool sort of summer into fall kind of a feeling on this page, but you can use this same technique for all kinds of different photographs. I would recommend, um, well, let's talk about, we'll talk about what style of photo um, here as we get moving on. So we've got, uh, let's start down here in the layers palette. And if you would like to follow along, I will keep it kind of, um, keep the walkthrough a little bit slower so that you can follow along kind of click by click. But of course, you'll have this video recorded um, and it will be available through the middle of next week. And after that, then you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to have that as uh, in Photoshop Friday Forever. So let's go ahead and start at the bottom of the layer stack. Our plus background layer is at the very bottom. Um, and then right above that is our our plus photo label. So one of the things that you'll notice here along the side is that I've actually turned the layer colors green that are clippable. This is a brand new thing I'm trying. And now that we can do that in Photoshop Elements, awesome. So if you've opened this template in either Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, you should be getting that same green color right over the top of the little um, the little eyeball icon. So these ones are now, from now on forever, for my stuff, this is how you can find all of the clippable layers in any template. Makes it a lot easier. So our photo label is gonna be the one that's right down here at the bottom. And I like this neutral brown, and I actually just left it when I completed the page, because it turned out really nice. And then we've got this photo frame shadow. I actually handmade this, uh, this shadow right here. So that's why it's a separate layer than just being a layer style. And we, we talk about hand making drop shadows in, um, in my digital scrapbook classes. This is a feature that is specific to the full version of Photoshop, where you can actually warp layers. So you can see that in this particular shadow, you can see that the corners come down a little bit right here. But then as the center comes up, the shadow gets smaller right here. And that's actually that's actually a black layer that I've warped up into the up the middle right here. So I kind of pulled that up just a little bit. That's something we talk about in my digi classes. Um, so right above that is going to be our photo frame. And then our plus photo, whoops, I didn't, um, I didn't color that one, look at it. There, there we go. So our plus photo. Um, and then we've got some text here. So side by side, hand in hand forever. If you are not using a photograph where people are walking hand in hand, obviously you can use a different, um, some different phrasing right there. And then I just put a bunch of synonyms for walking the idea that that this family is is a family that's going to walk through their lives together i thought that sentiment was really sweet then we've got our top papers right here which are the blue one so i've clipped in a blue pattern paper and then i've clipped in a yellow pattern paper right here and then we can go ahead and clip in the the roses one that I that I gave you in the download. Then we've got a couple more pieces of text that you can edit here for the last name and when the family was established. And then there's a little heart icon and then the pink flag and then the stitching. And I left those layered out so you can use them in different projects if you would like to. So that is the template itself. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that?
Okay, so the you're saying that the that the video is blurry when you switch it to full screen, the the feed. Let me see if there's anything I can do about that. Do you have any in the meantime any questions about the layout itself? Um, looks like we're having just a few video quality issues. Um, the best thing I could suggest at this point is um, try to follow and then just know that it's being recorded and it's um, it could be because it's a huge storm outside. Um, and then uh, just know that the video is going to be recorded and be crystal clear and you'll be able to come back and watch it in detail. But I will try to talk through um, as you know the best explanation that I can as well. Um, I'm not sure why there would be a big X over the layout. Um, Elizabeth asks, so is that um, like you try to upload it or you try to open it? Um, okay, so Renee suggests she had to leave and then come back and now the video looks better. Oh, okay, Elizabeth, all, you're all set. Good. All right. So why don't we head back um, into Photoshop and we'll take a look at this really cool technique. First, we're actually going to go back to Photoshop because you don't want to just look at, my, look at my mug. Let's see. All right. I love live broadcast. Woo! <laughs> it always keeps me on my toes. All right, so I'm going to come back to share my screen. And there it goes, kind of weird. All right. So once we've got our layout up, let's go ahead and put the papers in. And I'm just going to pop the photograph in that I've set up for this lower photo. So yesterday I sent an email with kind of your photo assignment. And that was to find some people and take a picture of their feet. And so the reason for that is that I think feet pictures are so, so cool. And when you're trying to get a bunch of people that don't like being photographed all together in a photograph, telling them that you're going to take a picture of their feet sort of breaks the ice a little bit and be like, this one's going to be so cool, I promise. So having a foot picture is, um, is a really cool way to sort of get people together. So I took a picture of this family's last name is Stewart. I took a picture of the feet of the Stewarts, and they were so excited about it. Uh, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and plug mine in. But let's go ahead and start in the background. So when I'm scrapbooking, I like to keep things up. Or when I'm when I'm teaching, I like to keep things up in my Finder, my Mac Finder. That way, when I've got one folder that I know I'm going to keep coming back to, so this is what I recommend for you as well. When you're 
in a class and you're you're working from one specific folder, then go ahead and just navigate to that. Oh, hear the thunder? Look at that. Um, go ahead and navigate to that folder using your Mac Finder or your Windows Explorer, and then you can basically just keep this thing open the whole time and not have to come back into file and open and blah, blah, blah. That's the, that's the noise that that file and open makes in my head after the first couple times. Blah, 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 blah. Now, as a little side note, if I am scrapbooking kind of for myself, I've switched organizers, and I'm using a new one that was released. It's been, it's been a while now because I wanted, before I started recommending it to people, I wanted to really give it a, a good test. But I've been using this, um, this Mac software called PickSave. And um, PickSave is what I switched to from Pixa, which is the one that I have been that I had been using for a few years, but then the developers just kind of abandoned it, and that made me sad. So I've wanted for at least a year and a half um, to make sure that this company was going to still be there and that they were going to, you know, keep making updates, and they have been. So um, we'll, we can talk more about Pixave if you want to. Um, maybe I'll do a. a tutorial or a walkthrough or a webinar, whatever you would like. If you're using a Mac and you're interested in learning more about that. If you're on Windows, of course, I still recommend um, ACDC as the, as the digital scrapbook supply management software. And for those of us who like organizing physical supplies, as much as we like organizing digital supplies, then that really um, it's fun to sit down, you know, with a with a show or with some music, and just organize your stuff. And whether that's in physical form and you you like sorting your buttons or whatever, it's the same kind of joy <laughs> when you when you want to sort your digital supplies too. Um, I can show you a little bit what that looks like as we move on here. Um, here it is. So this is. The interface for PicSave, and basically you can, um, it's a lot like Pixa for those of you who, who um, have taken that class or have seen that before. It's basically you can have different, um, different collections over here on this side, and then you can sort them by tags or put them into categories. So this has been a really solid product for at least a year and a half. And, um, it really has made it worth the time investment that it's taken. And that's really why I haven't said anything about it yet, because I wanted to make sure, you know, if I start recommending, hey, go and do this, and then you spend like 30 hours or 40 or 50, let's just be honest, um, or 60, let's be even more honest, um, then I wanted to make sure that this company was still going to be around and things were still going to get updated. And they really have been. So these, um, this is something where what's nice about this is that I could select something. So say you've got a really cute fuzzy alphabet number here. Alpha, yeah, whatever. This really cute number one. If I select it and then I copy with my command C and then I switch over to my layout and I type command V, it actually just pastes it straight in, which is the most majestic, magnificent thing ever because I don't have to open it and manage opening and closing files again. So if that's something that looks good, absolutely. OK, that was a little tangent, and now we're back. Let's go ahead and with our Mac Finder, remember how we were there, or our Windows Explorer, I'm just going to drag this background, um, the CD Honeycomb Front 3. I'm just going to pull that and wait till it switches over to Photoshop and then just drop it on. Now mine's going to come in through camera raw. That's OK. Just click OK. And in the full version of Photoshop, that's going to get dropped directly on to the layout. And we just have to hit Enter to commit that. In Photoshop Elements, that's going to open up as a new document. And then you can pull that on. 
So that's the main difference in opening files out of um, the Mac Finder or the Windows Explorer between, between Photoshop CC and Photoshop Elements. So as we work our way up, let's go ahead and just get the rest of this all set up. Um, I'm going to grab the photograph that I used for this and just clip that in. So you remember that a clipping mask is done with, come over here to the layers palette and you'll hover on the line in between your photo and the plus photo layer that's right underneath it. You're going to hold down your Alt or Option key, and you're going to watch your cursor turn into that little icon that looks like a square with a little bent arrow on it. Then just click down, and you can create your clipping mask. So here's the, here's the photo of the feet. I think we should make feet, fo feet photo scrap of pages a thing. So let's go ahead and make that a thing because it's really cool. Um, plus it shows, you know, I just love this family that's all together and it's like, okay, you can tell the dad and the mom and there's like this, vi this variety of little cute feet and then there's like this teeny one that's like half the kid. I just love that. I think it's so cool. All right, we can work our way up. We're gonna just add in the last paper that's way at the top here, plus top paper three. So we're gonna do the same thing, which is come out to Finder or to Windows Explorer, and you want to make sure that you have the layer targeted that you actually want to put the paper on top of, because in Photoshop CC, that's actually just going to plop right onto the page in that exact place. That way you don't have to move it around. So we're going to take our YT, which is yours truly floral, pull it up, Mine's going to come in through camera raw. Look how pretty that is. And then we just hit enter to commit. Now let's come over and clip this in right over here in the layers palette. We're going to hover and alt or option while we click down and it clips in right up here. Now we can resize that a little bit. The pattern is, is pretty large scale for this. So I'm just going to resize it a little. There we go. And we're getting there, right? So this is sort of our foundation and it'll be the place where we start with our very cool photo technique. If you have questions, pop them in the chat, they'll get relayed to me and we'll do great. So hopefully things are working out so far. Um, I'd love to hear what you think and whether you think we can make feet photo scrapbook pages a thing, because I think, I think we could do it, you and I. I think we all could do it. So what we're going to do at this point is let's go ahead and install our brush set. It's three brushes, and we're going to use those to actually paint a photograph into the layout that's right here. So I wanted to show you, let's, let's go ahead and install these in our traditional way. If you're in Photoshop Elements, you can use the Preset Manager, which you can come up to File, sorry, Edit and Preset Manager. Um, if you are in the full version of Photoshop, oh yeah, so the full version of Photoshop is Edit and Presets and Preset Manager. Um, that's the way that you can actually add multiple sets of brushes. For now, we can kind of keep it simple. And I'm just going to come to my brush palette. We can get that out right up here in our window menu and just choose brush right here. And we have to select our brush tool, the letter B, in order to activate the brushes that we have. So that's going to come in with something that looks like this here in the full version of Photoshop. And 
in Photoshop Elements, it's going to come in at the bottom of your screen. In order to, I'm going to go ahead and just launch Photoshop Elements so we can have that kind of as a reference. Here that comes. Because the brush install thing is really important. That's me drinking my drink. If you couldn't, <laughs> if, if whatever that was didn't sound like, sounded weird. Okay. Um, Oh, come on. I just had this open in here. All right. Great. So to load up brushes here in Photoshop Elements, if you want to do it the simple way, we're just going to type the letter B. And that will give us our brush tool right down here. Then we're going to pop up the brush selector that's here in the toolbar at the bottom of the screen, or the options bar. And then we're going to pick this little flyout menu right here. And we're going to choose load brushes. Then we're going to run over, or click over. We're going to run over here and grab our brush set from the download. Here it is. JSSubtle.abr and then just click open. And there we go. Uh, we've got our brush set installed right here. So let's do the same thing here in the full version of Photoshop. We're just going to open up our brush palette. Remember, we have to have our brush tool selected. And then we'll come, I keep clicking on the go away icon instead of the little menu. So you're going to click on your menu, and you're going to choose Hang on. I need brush presets. There it is. Okay. Dock that in. And there we go. Now we can choose load brushes from here. We'll navigate to the place where we downloaded these and go ahead and install them. Mine are right down here at the bottom of my brush preview. Here we go. Grab that. Okay, it is four brushes. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to walk you through two ways of doing basically the same technique. The first thing that we want to do is actually bring our photograph in. My brush preview, my little brush preview is kind of driving me crazy right now because that's the watercolor one we're going to use at the end. But what we want to do is create a new layer right up above our pattern paper. And that's going to be where we place our photograph. So let's come and click on our honeycomb front three pattern paper. And then we can pull the photo in that we're going to be using. So here's where I recommend that 
that you choose a photograph that has people that aren't that aren't looking at the camera they can be looking off to the side they don't have to be looking you know fully away kind of like this but this technique has a really cool kind of a kind of a a far away kind of a feel to it where things are you know we're going to make it kind of misty and a little bit hard to see and it's one of those sort of you know we're kind of peeking in on a moment that people are having and so choosing a photograph that has people who are looking away whether that's you know even looking down to the side or eyes closed or fully facing away look for a photograph like that and i think you'll have the the best kind of look so all i want to do here is just this is straight out of the camera so i'm just going to open it and this one came in and of course in photoshop elements that's going to come in as its own file and you're going to just pull that off same thing so what we want to do here is actually turn this photograph to black and white all I'm going to do is just desaturate it, basically just strip out the color because it's going to be so subtle, the photograph, that we're not going to notice too much of the contrast. We want this to be, you know, basically the second thing people see. So the first thing will be the, the word art. I guess the third thing, because the first thing will be the word art. The second thing will be the, the feet. And then the third thing will be as people get closer, they're, they're going to be like, wow, look at that. Okay, so, so the, the photo that we're working on is going to be more subtle than kind of right out front. So we're not going to spend a ton of time editing. So all we're going to do here is just desaturate. So in the full version of Photoshop, that's right here under Image and Adjustments and Desaturate. That does nothing other than take out the color. So it does no um, exposure, it does no contrast, nothing. It just strips out the color. Over in Photoshop Elements, that command, I won't, I won't get the photo out here, but that command is image, sorry, enhance and adjust color and remove color. So that'd be the one that you use for Photoshop elements to essentially just strip out the color. So that way, this is gonna kind of take on the tonality of whatever the layer is that's underneath it. That's how transparent it's gonna be. So that's something to keep in mind for if you're going to put this over the top of, of a different color of background. So you're going to do some something kind of a DIY sort of scenario. It's going to be so transparent that you that you're going to want to be careful about what you're going to put underneath it. We can talk about that after we get the technique finished. So one cool thing about um, about this technique is that it's really hard to screw it up because we're basically just going to paint this in to the image itself. I want to put this right down here. Put it in the wrong one. There we go. I want to basically just make sure that this is in the right spot. Okay. So kind of the family sort of centered up here. And then what we're going to do is make the entire thing invisible. And the way we do that is by creating a layer mask. There's a quick way to create a fully filled layer mask. So does everybody know what a layer mask is? Why don't we go back through this just super quick. A layer mask enables us to show and hide selectively anything that's on a particular layer. So it's basically like, like using masking tape to, you know, if I had, um, and if I had an image and I wanted to put some invisibility tape over the top of part of it, that's basically what a, what a layer mask does. So what we're going to do is turn this entire 
layer, the entire photograph, invisible, and then use the brushes that we've just installed to bring back visibility on only parts of the image. So the way we create a really quick layer mask that makes that layer fully hidden is by holding down our Alt or Option key while we click on the Layer Mask button. Here in Photoshop Elements, sorry, here in the full version of Photoshop, your Layer Mask button is right down here in the very bottom right-hand corner. And so you're going to hold down Option while you click on that. And you're going to watch the photo just disappear. And you can see our Layer Mask comes in black which means that the whole layer is hidden now. Black means hidden. White means showing. So we're actually going to paint onto this layer mask using a white brush. And if you're in Photoshop Elements, we'll come in and say I wanted, I'll just practice with this one here. The layer mask button is actually up at the top of your layer stack. Right up here, it looks the same, it's just a rectangle with a circle cut out of it. So we're going to do the same thing, hold down Alt or Option while we click on that Layer Mask button. And that's going to turn the whole thing to hidden. Now we can come back in with our brush tool and be able to essentially paint the photograph back in. So let's come in now with our brush tool and see what we can make of this. I'm going to grab the brush tool with the letter B. And we're going to go ahead and pop out our Let's see. There it is. I'm going to pop out my brush. Presets. There we go. So I'm going to take Honestly, any one of these brushes. One of the things you're going to notice about the brushes themselves, if we look real close here, you can actually see that, the, that they don't have any really sharp edges. So I thought about using something like these really cool watercolor brushes right here, thought about giving you some of those, but these have really harsh edges. And so this is something to keep in mind when you're later on going to be playing with this technique in other circumstances. If you use a hard-edged brush, like these watercolor ones, and you come in and you want to paint in white on your layer mask, so you're going to click on the black square right here in the layers palette, and then we're going to switch over to white as our foreground color. And there's what happens when you paint with a hard-edged brush. You get a, you know, this sounds obvious now. Um, you get a hard edged image. And what we want is to have this be really painterly. We're going to do that in two separate ways here. The, um, the first way is that we're going to use a brush that doesn't have hard edges on it. So let's go ahead and switch back to that. Any one of these three, I gave you three so that we could kind of switch out from between them so it, we didn't create sort of a, a pattern as we stamped along. And not only is this brush a lot more subtle, but we're actually going to make it even more subtle by changing the opacity. And that's going to be right up here in the options bar at the top of your screen or in Photoshop Elements. That's going to be right down here, the brush tool. That's going to be right here at the bottom of your screen in the options bar where it says opacity. So that's something we can control before we stamp. And that's important when we're stamping on a layer mask because this is something that you want to only have to do kind of, um, it's something that you want to do when you are stamping on a layer mask because you can't control the opacity with your opacity setting right here because that affects the photograph itself. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to grab our brush tool. Here it is. I actually can't even see the brush preview, but you can see it when it starts to work. Let's go ahead and set our opacity down. Let's go to something like 70%. If you want, if you want it to be really subtle, you could set it a little bit even lower than that. But essentially what it's saying is we're going to take our brush and start stamping it, but it's only going to be 70% of the normal strength. That's definitely something that you want to consider when you want things to be really subtle, is just to play with changing the opacity before you even stamp it down. So you can see right down here in the layers palette that you can start to get a little ghost of the white brushwork that we're starting to do. So we're actually stamping in white and I'm just kind of going around giving it some giving it some whoops hitting it here with the with the with the brush tool and maybe I'll switch brushes a little bit maybe I'll go down even further in opacity when I when I want to do the edges here And if you find that you are getting harsh edges, you can see I've got one right here. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of this photograph, which is going to help because then there won't be any edges. Here we go. And then to overcome this, any kind of an edge issue right here, all we need to do is switch our foreground and background color. Type X, and that's going to return our foreground color to its default of black. So that actually will come back in when we hide, or that will actually come back in and begin brushing in black, which will, which will go ahead and hide that. There we go. That brush is super subtle. That's a good thing when we're talking about, you know, creating this very softened back effect here. And really, you can just kind of do this to your taste. Um, what I really like about this technique is that you can change the way that feels simply by making it a little bit more intense, making it a little bit less intense. So once we get kind of the feeling that we're looking for, I'm just going to hit it with the with my brush tool a couple more times. Um, kind of switch things up, make sure I've gotten it, you know, to kind of the density that I want. So in that case, I want to make sure that we're focusing on the family members themselves um, rather than, you know, getting too much detail here on the edges. So you can see here in the little layer mask icon, We've got a whole bunch of little ghost images here that are little kind of ghost preview right here that shows where the brushwork is really located, where we've been brushing in white. So this is something that kind of um, trips me up sometimes is when I leave and I'm clicking other places, I forget to actually, you have to physically click on the layer mask in order to start brushing with um, in order to start brushing on it again. Because if you just leave and then you come back to this layer, it's not going to go to the layer mask. You have to actually click on the layer mask. Otherwise, we'll end up just, just brushing in black rather than revealing what's actually hidden um, that, we're, that we've had masked out. So this looks really good. I'm really, really happy with the way that this is going. I'm just going to come back. That brush is very strong. Got to be a little bit more careful with it. And again, if you don't like the way something has has come in, then you can just hit X and use that same brush or get 
a different one of the subtle brushes out um, and kind of knock that effect back a little bit. So this is a really pretty and super useful technique for creating that kind of shadowed effect. What I love about this is that we've taken a photo that was already, whoops, show it again. We've taken a photo that was already pretty cute. I mean, that little guy in the middle just makes my heart squeeze. But we've been able to take that really with no additional photo editing and turn it into something that really creates some spectacular depth in the center of that layout. Something that you could easily simply print and give as a gift or print and hang on your wall. And it's the perfect treatment for one of these kind of softened up, um, the, for one of these kind of softened up um, photographs, the soft kind of look that we're going for. So um, let me go ahead and, and see if there's any questions. It looks like we have a few people with some older versions of Photoshop that are having trouble with the brush set. I'm going to see if we can save out um, those into maybe an individual, into individual brushes or see what we can do. So um, if you are having trouble, go ahead and send either do a, make a ticket or go ahead and just send, um, send me an email, jessica at jessicasprague.com, or send Megan an email, because that's where they're going to end up going, at megan at jessicasprague.com. And she'll be able to help um, make sure that you get the file that you need. And then just go ahead and um, you know check back into the course. OK. So do you have any questions? I'm going to come back. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. OK. There. Hi. OK. So tell me, my darling, if you have any questions. So Okay, so it, we have a question here about clicking on the on the alt uh, oh um we have a question about clicking on the alt and mask icon make sure that you have the that photo layer targeted. So if the photo is not disappearing when you create the, you know, something ought to disappear if you're sitting on that layer when you alt and layer mask, that might be the issue. Um, Sherry the, the wonders what size to set the brushes at. This is something I just used the default size that I that I saved them out at. This is something that you don't have to, um, there isn't really a formula here. I kept mine nice and big. Let me look. Um, I kept them at, at the sizes that they were installed. So they're in the 800, they're, they're in the what? 750 to 850 pixel range. So fairly um, large scale and very soft with no harsh edges at all. Any other questions? I'd love to know what you think of this technique and what your, you know, when you have, um, what your ideas or what your thoughts are going to be for what kind of project you're going to be using it for. And I'd love to know, or I'd love to be able to see a photograph of that when you get it finished. It would be so awesome. So I wanted to show you something, and part of the reason why I was getting kind of tripped up on the brushes is because I've been using this awesome 
brush management extension for Photoshop. This works for Photoshop CC, and that's pretty much it. So if you're using older versions of Photoshop, or if you're using Photoshop Elements, um, this is not available. But it's enough of a game changer for me that if you are using Photoshop CC, um, it's something to really go take a look at. It's called Brushbox, and it's basically um, it basically combines a bunch of the functionality of the brush tool, or sorry, the brush palette and the brush preset palette and a few more things. So you just basically install it and then you dock this into, I just docked this in just like any other palette. And that's essentially what it is, is just an additional palette. So when you install new brush sets, you'll actually do that through Brushbox right here. But the cool thing is that it groups them all together and shows you the name of whatever the brush set is. And you can delete certain ones, or you can move them around. You can set certain ones to be favorites. Um, what I really like about this is that when I create my own brushes, I can actually save them right out of here as its own set. And it's very easy to, to set certain ones as favorites as well, so that you can basically filter through all the ones that, um, that you use all the time and that you like. So this is definitely something that I would recommend taking a look at. So you can see this is you know, a bunch of the brush sets that I have installed. And now I can see, OK, I remember why I put that in here. And oh, OK, there's watercolor. And then I don't have to look at them like this, which is here are the 2,000 brushes that I own. And I'm not sure where they came from or, or why I might have put them in there. And of course, um, this has solved that issue for me. Uh, and I love it. So the link to Brushbox is actually in the course itself. If you're using, oh, <laughs> Megan just texted me and she's like, did you want to show? Yeah. I have just been, you've just been looking at my face this whole time. So sorry about that. Why don't, I know I'm so attractive. Why don't I share my screen so that you can see? <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's like five minutes of talking, too. We're going to go ahead and edit that piece out, right? Because um, I was just like, look at this. Great. And anyway, we don't need to rehash it. You were just here. So this is Brushbox. And essentially, what it does is um, it replaces or um, takes on the functionality of both the brush tool and the brush preset. So I use this exclusively as my brushes manager. One of my favorite things about it is that when we add in a new brush set, it actually comes in in its own little group right here. And that makes so much more sense to me than just the giant mass of brushes. You can also just add or delete these. You can change the color of of different ones to sort of highlight them. I love this one, love this one, whatever. You can change the groups that they are in. So if you wanted to make like a like a grand collection of all your favorites, you could do that. Um, and this, uh, this becomes the management interface too. So you can load and unload brushes from here, or you can even create brush sets from right inside a brush box. I've included the link to the Brushbox tool um, in the course. And if you're using Photoshop CC, I definitely recommend taking a look at this. It's been, I just used this um, for a big project I've been working on, and it was a total game changer as far as being able to use brushes in 
not only my scrapbooking work, but in my general design work as well. All right. It is so nice to have you guys here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over, back over. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it is so... Um, It is so nice to okay, good. We I was just looking at the looking at the comments here. So it looks like we've gotten um, we've gotten some of our issues solved. Awesome. And uh, Sherry asks if there's such a thing as a style manager. I'm pretty sure there is. Styles would be um, especially in Photoshop Elements. There'd be like the layer styles and uh, let's see, what do they have? Effects and stuff like that. Um, you can actually manage those as well. So uh, this has been super fun, and I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with me this evening, um, spending a little bit of your Friday and Labor Day weekend, and this is a technique now that I hope that you'll be able to kind of spend a few hours experimenting with over this next weekend. Um, I wanted to make a couple of announcements. You guys will be the first, hooray. So there are some cool things coming up. Um, we are, I'm going to have, wait for it, I'm gonna have, um, I'm gonna be announcing Sprague Fest. It's gonna be an online event and it's gonna be um, in the middle of October. That's all I'm gonna say for now, the announcement is coming. Um, the other thing is that, uh, we're going to be having, um, we're going to be offering, Heidi Swap and I are gonna be offering Mouse Paper Scissors Holidays again. Um, and that's gonna be starting up beginning of October. For next year, I'm gonna be doing a brand new course series that's called The Brand of You. And it will be, um, really specifically dedicated to how to brand yourself, whether or not you're a small business owner or whether um, you're just looking to enhance your online presence. Um, that one's gonna be really fun. So it'll be, it'll start out with things like your logo and your business card and it'll get into your blog and your website and lots of cool image editing techniques and really focus on on branding yourself. And I'm super excited about 2018 for that reason. But for now, it's only September 1st and it's Labor Day weekend. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you for spending part of it with me. Do not hesitate to email me. Um, you know you know my, my email, um, email Megan, don't hesitate there either. Um, if you have questions about this, particular technique or if you have questions in general um, you know what versions of whatever or computer questions or what have you and I will do my absolute best um, you know if you want my opinion on you know any kind of thing you know I will give it to you <laughs> except for politics because no um, that is one thing that no so um, but everything else so have a wonderful wonderful weekend and stay safe pray for the people in houston do what you can to donate to your favorite organization um, who can go to the rescue and help them and have a wonderful weekend okay bye bye <laughs>